my amateur radio technician license course. Uh, this is lesson three, part one. We'll be learning about the properties of uh, radio waves and some propagation modes. So it's a great day to uh, learn, so let's get started. I'm Gary Stevens, your instructor, KE2GS. In lesson three, there are three exam questions out of the three groups. Uh, deals with radio wave characteristics, uh, as more specifically, uh, properties of radio waves and propagation modes. When it comes to electromagnetic waves, some surfaces act as a reflector, similar to the way that a mirror reflects light. This can be a double-edged sword in that it can cause degradation to the signal or it can allow us to receive a signal in spite of some obstacle. When the reflective wave is received from different directions, we call it a multipath signal. Sometimes when we are mobile, our signal is reflected, creating a multipath back to the repeater. Sometimes our signal is just having a difficult time hitting the repeater due to obstacles or sources of interference. This can often be corrected by simply moving a few feet in either direction or changing the antenna orientation. You need to know for the exam, if another operator reports that your station's two meter signals were strong just a moment ago, but now they are weak and distorted, try moving a few feet or changing the direction of your antenna if possible, as reflections may be causing multipath distortion. VHF and UHF uh, signals are highly attenuated by vegetation. Simply put, Attenuation is the gradual loss of signal strength uh, or intensity through a medium. Obviously, there's less vegetation in the winter, so radio wave propagation would be better for VHF and UHF. For the exam, you need to know the range of VHF and UHF signals might be greater in the winter because there is less absorption by vegetation. The weak signal mode refers to communications that are long distance and in the VHF and UHF bands. The most common bands are 2 meter and 6 meter. Making weak signal contacts requires use in an all-mode transceiver as well as learning new skills. Some say you need more luck than skill, however. The higher the frequency, the more difficult it is to make contact at distance. This is because higher frequencies are also highly attenuated. Data and CW tend to work best for weak signal operations. The vast majority of operators use horizontal polarization for CW and single sideband operations uh, in the VHF, UHF bands. Using vertical polarization is likely to limit your ability to make contacts with stations, uh, especially at a distance. For the exam, you need to know a horizontal antenna polarization is normally used for long distance weak signal CW and single sideband contacts using the VHF and UHF bands. In this illustration, you can see the radio waves have different orientation. Consequently, when the wave uh, reaches the receiving antenna, there's only a small area where the antenna receives the signal. Therefore, the strength is greatly reduced. For the exam, you should know signals could be significantly weaker if the antennas at the opposite end of a VHF or UHF line of sight radio link are not using the same polarization. Directional antennas radiate with more power by focusing the energy in one direction. They also have more gain for reception. For the exam, you need to know that when using a directional antenna, you might be able to access a distant repeater when buildings are obstructing uh, your path or blocking uh, the direct line of sight if you try to find a path that reflects signals to the repeater. Picket fencing may sound something like this. This is KE2GS or IPS. Anybody out there on the repeater today? For the exam, you need to know that picket fencing is a term commonly used to describe the rapid fluttering sounds sometimes heard on mobile stations that are moving while transmitting. Radio waves are really electromagnetic waves. There is an electric field component as well as a magnetic field. The two are in phase, but the radiation polarities are different. For the exam, you should understand that an electromagnetic wave carries radio signals between transmitting and receiving stations. 
When the conditions are right, the ionosphere makes an ideal reflector for HF radio signals. Often called a skip or a hop, it can carry a signal for a distance of over 2,000 miles. Uh, with CW or Morse code, this distance can be made with as little as a half a watt of power under ideal conditions. The ionosphere can also create multiple paths. For the exam, know that a random combining of signals arriving via different paths is a likely cause of irregular fading of signals received by ionospheric reflection. Because of the nature and thickness of the ionosphere, it can cause radio waves to be refracted. This change in direction can make the signal elliptically polarized. For the exam, you should understand that the results from the fact that skipped signals refracted from the ionosphere or elliptically polarized is either vertical or horizontally polarized antennas may be used for transmission or reception. When we receive multiple path phone signals, our ears can sometimes discern what is being said because our brains are wired to fill in the gaps. In the computer world of true, false, on or off, zero or one, there isn't so much wiggle room. Uh, computers are just not wired to guess, although it can try to do some error correction based on various algorithms. For the exam, you should remember that error rates are likely to increase if the data signal arrives via different or multiple paths. The ionosphere is dynamic in nature. It is sometimes predictable and other times not. The F1 and F2 layers will combine at night. Solar storms perturb or alter the shape of the ionosphere. Solar rays also increase the number of ions. The more ions there are, the more it will bend or refract uh, radio waves. The ionosphere region extends from 30 to 260 miles above the Earth's surface. Uh, to put this in perspective, the International Space Station orbit is generally uh, an altitude of 250 miles. Because the atmosphere is so thin in that region, ultraviolet radiation causes ionization, thus the name ionosphere. Note that ions are electrically conductive. For the exam, you need to know that the ionosphere is the part of the atmosphere that enables the propagation of radio waves around the world. Neither 6 or 10 meters are attenuated by light rain. For your test, know that with regards to 10 meters and 6 meters, uh, fog and light rain will have little effect on these bands. However, microwaves have trouble propagating through precipitation. Rain, fog, or snow can cause UHF signals to fade completely. Understand that precipitation is a weather condition that will decrease the range of microwave frequencies. Now we need to talk about radio and electromagnetic wave properties. Uh, in particular, the uh, electromagnetic spectrum, uh, the wavelength uh, versus frequency, the nature and velocity of electromagnetic waves, uh, the definitions of uh, UHF, VHF, and HF bands, and how to calculate uh, the wavelength. Let's go over some vocabulary words. Uh, amplitude is the maximum extent of an oscillation or a wave. So a whisper would have less amplitude than a normal speaking voice. Uh, frequency is the number of cycles that occur within a second. A period is a portion of time, and it's also the reciprocal of a frequency. Uh, wavelength is the distance a radio wave travels in one cycle. And harmonics is a signal from the transmitter or oscillator that occurs in whole number multiples, such as 2, 3, and 4, of the desired frequency. To calculate uh, the wavelength, we just need to know the frequency. The lambda symbol is used in the formula where lambda or wavelength is equal to 300 divided by frequency in megahertz. For the technician license exam, you need to know that wavelength is the name for the distance a radio wave travels during one complete cycle. You also need to know something we touched upon earlier, that is...
The orientation of an electric field is the property of a radio wave that is used to describe its polarization. Because light and radio waves are both in the electromagnetic spectrum, they travel at the same speed, which is uh, 300 kilometers per second. Uh, for the exam, know that radio waves travel at the speed of light through free space. To validate this concept, you could either do the math using the wavelength formula or glance at the band plan chart that lists the frequency and approximate wavelength. For the test, remember that the wavelength gets shorter as the frequency increases. You need to remember that the formula for converting frequency to approximate wavelength in meters is wavelength in meters equals 300 divided by the frequency in megahertz. I encourage you to use the formula on various frequencies that's uh, listed on the band plan chart uh, to see how well they approximate the band uh, designation. Uh, for the, the test, however, remember that the approximate wavelength is often used to identify the different frequency bands. The radio portion of the electromagnetic spectrum is fairly large. Uh, it ranges from 3 kilohertz to 300 gigahertz. Uh, for the technician uh, exam, know the limits of uh, HF or high frequency, VHF or very high frequency, and H, uh, UHF uh, ultra high frequency. Know that 30 to 300 megahertz is the frequency limits of the VHF spectrum. Also know that 300 to 3000 megahertz are the frequency limits of the UHF spectrum. Additionally, know that 3 to 30 megahertz is the frequency range that is referred to as HF. Some exam questions expect you to know the metric system to some degree. One question might be in meters and another in kilometers. Know that 300 million meters per second is the approximate velocity of a radio wave as it travels through free space. Well, that's all for this lesson. In uh, lesson three, part two, we will continue our learning about uh, propagation modes. Uh, if you like this series, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So we'll see you next time. And remember, never stop learning.